We got some huge new details about the PlayStation 5, namely that it's launching in the fall of 2020, what the new features of the controller will be and way way more. So let's get into it, I want to tell you everything we learned in this video. Would be awesome if you could leave a like on the video as it shows your support and let's go. Let's get one thing out of the way, the new console is indeed called the PlayStation 5. Not really a surprise but still nice to know. We already knew that it supports discs and we now learned that these discs can go up to 100 gigs. So I don't expect some games to have two discs instead of one, just like we see with The Last of Us Part 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2 had that as well. Another nice thing to know is that the optical drive for the PlayStation 5 can be used as a 4K Blu-ray player, where with the PS4 Pro this was not possible. We don't know how much space will be on the SSD that will ship with the PlayStation 5, but we did learn that there will be new ways to install your games. So it's still needed to install your games after inserting a disc, especially now to benefit from the increased speed of the SSD. But what you can do on the PlayStation 5 is say with a Call of Duty for example, just install the multiplayer campaign if you only plan to play that or of course the other way around. You can also install everything and then delete the single player campaign once you've finished it but keep the multiplayer and this is very nice for large games that have multiple components. They also talked about the user interface where it will be easier to see a set of joinable activities in real time. So I would imagine that you can then easily join your friends or search for a match in a specific game. But also for single player games there will be information like what missions you could do in that game and what rewards you might receive from completing them. This sounds like looking at your quest lock without having to boot up the game. So from the dashboard you can decide what game you're going to play based on the mission that you could do. And this information by the way all comes from Wired. Today once again had the exclusive and I will link to their article in the video description. They also talked about the controller that looked a lot like the DualShock 4, but Wired did see a little hole in it and Sony did file a patent for an AI assistant recently, although it's unclear if this is what that's for. But a microphone on the controller would already be a pretty nice addition. More interesting though are the two, from the sounds of it, major improvements. One is for the triggers, that they now call adaptive triggers, that can offer varying levels of resistance to make shooting a bow and arrow feel like the right thing, or make a machine gun feel far different from a shotgun. Sounds like a feature that would be perfect in the next horizon, where you of course use a bow most of the time. But of course for any shooter as well, it sounds very interesting and a great improvement for just playing games. While normally Sony likes to add features like swiping on the touchpad that nobody really wanted. There is more though because Wired got to play a demo made by Studio Japan where he could feel the new haptic feedback feature. So a fastly improved rumble system in the left and right grips of the controller. Wired describes the experience as follows. Sand felt slow and sluggy, mud felt slow and soggy. On ice, a high frequency response made the thumbstick really feel like my character was gliding. And jumping in a pool, I got the sense of the resistance of the water. On a wooden bridge, a bouncy sensation. Sounds like an awesome feature that will make the games feel more immersive and totally something that the single player PS4 exclusives for example will benefit from a lot. But also racing games, so where the surface should now feel really different when playing. A fun little tidbit from this article is that this feature could be included in the PS4 Pro, but Sony did not want to create the split experience for gamers, so held the feature for the next generation. I haven't tried this feature of course myself, but I don't think that people would really mind if the PS4 Pro had this and the base PS4 not. I think most people were afraid that games would run poorly on the PS4 and only good on the PS4 Pro. Also nice is that the new PlayStation 5 controller, that by the way doesn't have a name yet, but it will have better speakers and a larger capacity battery. And thanks to that and the haptics motors, the new controller is a bit heavier than the DualShock 4, although not as heavy as the Xbox One controller with batteries in it. A nice burn right there because it's of course ridiculous that you still need to buy batteries for that controller unless you buy a separate charger pack. 
Also nice, by the way, that the PS5 controller can now be charged with a USB-C cable. Thank God, because these PS4 cables always break, at least for me. I don't know about you, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, the hardware is exciting, but in the end it's all about the games. And we got our first tease for a PlayStation 5 game from Bluepoint Games. The studio behind a lot of the PS4 remakes, including Shadow of the Colossus. As I've said many times before here on the channel, and I'm totally not the only one, I think that this is Demon's Souls, the game that started it all, but really not a lot of people played. They only said right now that they're working on a big one and they want us to figure out the rest. I mean, could be a cool launch title for sure, Demon's Souls PlayStation 5 Remake, something like that. I'm excited, this sounds like what I want, a better PS4 in almost every way without stupid gimmicks, but actually things that can make the games that we love to play on a PlayStation even better. And add the insanely fast load times to it and also the ray tracing technology that was mentioned in this article again it's a CPU hardware solution so first people were discussing is it going to be a software solution or a hardware solution but hardware is obviously better curious to hear what you think about all this PlayStation 5 news in the comments down below by the way the dev kit seems to indeed look like this wired confirmed this was already leaked a while back but it was kind of like is it real or not well wired saw this exact thing in uh, the sort of room where he got hands on with the PS5. Holiday 2020, so November, October, December, likely November is when we will see this system. I can't wait to see what games will launch alongside that. The new Horizon, maybe that Demon Souls remastered game, if they're already talking about it here, then that remake from Bluepoint Games can totally be there at launch, but do you want that to be your big launch title? I'm not really sure. When we know more about the PlayStation 5, I will of course let you know here on the channel. So subscribe to stay up to date. I'm not sure when they will finally reveal it. The PS4 was in February before the release. Something tells me that they will wait a little bit longer for this one. Because of games like The Lost of Us Part 2 and Ghost of Tsushima that still need to come out in 2020. They by the way once again noted Ghost of Tsushima a PS4 game. And I still think that it will launch before the PlayStation 5. When we know more, I will let you know here on the channel. So totally subscribe to stay up to date. I was actually working on the PS4 update 7.0 video while this news broke. And we'll have that one up soon. So maybe it's already up by the time you watch this. Then you can watch it by clicking on the screen to see what new features were added to the PS4. For now though, I will speak to you next time. And goodbye.